Hi everyone, my name is Johan Lindqvist and I work as a technical solutions manager for Helio Spectra. Uh, we are providing high-tech lighting solutions for growers all across the world. And, and today I'm going to kick off our new uh, educational series by growers for growers. And you will find more of this educational material in our grower center uh, at heliospectra.com. So in this first session, we're going to talk about light in horticulture. So uh, we're going to talk about all the parameters or all the aspects of light uh, that, that are uh, important to understand uh, when you work with plants. So uh, it's going to be uh, basic concepts. We're going to talk about uh, uh, what light is, uh, what is a spectrum, what is light intensity. Uh, we're also going to talk about some concepts that are used in the industry, uh, such as efficacy, what is efficacy, and and uh, what is the daily light integral and so forth so so we will we will go go through a few of the basic concepts uh, and then we will in this series build on build on that but let's start with the first question uh, what is light and it's actually actually a very very big question uh, almost philosophical but i will uh, i will just uh, scrape the surface here and and talk about it from the perspective of what we need to understand uh, when we work with light and plants uh, so light is essentially electromagnetic radiation. So that, that would be a form of wave that is transporting en energy. Uh, and we have many different types of electromagnetic radiation, such as microwaves or, or um, uh, radio waves. Uh, we also have X-rays or gamma rays. Uh, but among these types of electromagnetic radiation, there is also light or visible light, if so wishes. Uh, that that uh, that is a type of of wave but another way of looking at it is is to talk about photons so that would be almost you can you can say that light is a type of particle a photon that is flowing or or, or there are, there are many photons uh, falling uh, that that's a way of looking at light uh, and then then you can think that each photon has a certain wavelength and the wavelength corresponds to to which color that photon has and it carries a certain amount of energy. And, and I, I find it more easy to think about light as, as photons when, when you work with plants. So uh, we're now going to look at the spectrum. And a spectrum is actually a visualization of uh, when, you, when you look at a certain light, the spectrum is a visualization of how much of that light is blue photons, and how much of the light is green photons, and how much of the light is red photons. And you do so by, by looking at the graph here, where you do have the, the, the wavelength of the light on the on the x-axis. And, and then you can divide the spectrum into different sections like this. Blue light is defined as the photons with wavelengths between 400 and 500 nanometers. Green light is defined as the photons with five, uh, wavelengths between 500 and 600 nanometers. And the red is then the photons with wavelength between 600 and 700 nanometers. As you can see here, uh, of course, the, the yellow light, for example, falls under the category of, of green light when you divide it this uh, in this way. And also the orange, for example, is a, is a type of red, you can say. Uh, so uh, one thing that's very important when you, when you look at the spectrum is that uh, you should make sure that the y-axis here is showing the number of photons so it should be in the units of for example micromoles which we will talk more about later but it's important that it that the spectrum visualizes how many photons there are of the different colors uh, this would be as opposed to uh, spectra that there are spectra that is instead showing energy on the y-axis and and such a spectrum will will show how much energy is carried in the blue spectrum part of the spectrum how much energy is there in the red part of the spectrum and and uh, that's a little bit different story and the graph will be skewed uh, and therefore it could be a little bit misleading uh, so so you should uh, should be very aware when you look at the spectrum and first make sure is this in the unit of photons how many photons or is it in the unit of micromoles uh, very important, otherwise you, you might uh, be a little bit uh, confused. Mm. 
Okay, uh, let's talk about PAR. I believe that many of you might already be uh, uh, familiar with the concept of PAR. It stands for photosynthetically active radiation. Uh, so it is essentially a type of radiation and it is uh, the type that stimulates photosynthesis or that is uh, this PAR is utilized by the plants in the photosynthesis. And the PAR region is defined as all photons with wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers. This uh, overlaps very well or almost, almost perfectly with the visible spectrum, so what we humans can see. So again, it's the blue and the green and the red light. Uh, and again, this is the light that the plants use for photosynthesis. But that is not the only important uh, light for plants because as you see here and in this uh, in this figure here you see that there's something to the left and something to the right and that is also uh, important to plants so to the left we do have the ultraviolet or the uv radiation uh, that's with light with wavelengths below 400 uh, it's divided into uva and uvb and uvc and we, we can go into the into details to discuss the differences between those in, in another session. But for now, it's important to know that also this UV, even though it's not directly used in photosynthesis, it's not a part of PAR, but it's still of importance to plants for, for other reasons. It uses this as a, as a signal uh, on, on how to grow and, and what type uh, of compounds to produce and so forth. On the other hand, uh, on the other part here uh, to the right, we see uh, we see a FR uh, around 730 nanometers, and that's the far red radiation. So far red is, is a type of light with no, uh, wavelengths between 700 and 750 nanometers, and the far red light is also of great importance to to the plants. Uh, first of all, it's also used as a signal to the plants. Uh, and actually it has also shown that it contributes also to the photosynthesis. So the far red is very much uh, something that is important to plants as well. If you go even further to the right, you start to go into the infrared part of the spectrum. That would be if you go to 800 nanometers, 900 nanometers, 1000 and, and way above that. That would be the infrared light. And, and it do, the infrared does not really have any direct effect on the plants. Uh, uh, it does, I, I should say that it, it do can warm up, heat up water. So it has, uh, it plays a role in, in, a, in, a, uh, in, the, in the cultivation space, but it's not really directly used by the plants. So therefore uh, I would say that it's, uh, it's, it's of less importance to consider uh, infrared light, but uh, uh, then uh, for example, the UV and the PAR and the PAR red. Okay, good. <clears throat> I am now going to talk about two uh, terms or concepts that are often used uh, in, in our industry, uh, broad spectrum light and full spectrum light. What, what I want to explain what this is and also what the differences between uh, these two are. Um, these are concepts that are borrowed, of course, from other fields of, uh, of science. Uh, so it's a little bit differently defined uh, depending on, on uh, where it's used, but I will try to, to give you an idea of, of how you separate these two. So we're going to start with the broad spectrum, and, and that would be the spectrum that we have already looked at. It is a, a broad spectrum is a spectrum that has both blue photons, green photons, and red photons. So it has all the components of uh, the visible lights, visible light. So it has blue and green and red, and and that would be as opposed to a light that only have blue photons, as we see down to the left here. Uh, down to the left, I would call that a single peak, uh, single peak spectrum rather than a broad spectrum. Um, sometimes you can call it a narrow band spectrum as well, uh, but that is not a broad spectrum. We also have the dual peak spectrum, uh, dual, dual peak spectra, uh, which which clearly is not a broad spectrum because it does not have any green. So this example you see. It has a blue peak and a red peak, but it doesn't have any green. So therefore it's not a broad spectrum. If we move on to the full spectrum, so okay, what's how does a full spectrum light uh, look like? Uh, and we have such a spectra here. 
so this is an example. Uh, and again, we see some similarities uh, with the broad spectrum because we do have blue in there. We do have green in there and we do have red in there. But the difference here is that with a full spectrum light, we also have UV and far red. So a full spectrum light has all the different components that are of direct relevance to the plant. Um, and not only PAR, so to say, not only blue, green, and red, it also have UV and far red. So that's how you uh, differentiate between a broad spectrum and a full spectrum. 